Mr. Stephen Victor, Secretary, Administrator Section, Christian Medical College, Vellore. His education qualification BE in Mechanical Engineer, B in Human Sources, and working experience Christian Medical Association in India, CMAI, from 2009 till date. And skills and abilities, well versed with the curriculum development, PDIT, certified NABH assessors, experience in development disasters. And his credits importing professional training in hospital administration, providing consultancy in hospital engineering and energy management, editing the house quarterly health care administration publicity chief board, conducting quality and energy audits. I request the speaker to come and, and I hand over the section to Good to speak uh, after tea because in many of the conferences I am called to talk uh, just after lunch. So I'll thank the organizers for calling me after tea. As I was preparing for this session, I was wondering uh, how to start. And I came across a uh, number of words uh, which have uh, the word cute in it. We like things which are very cute, right? You look at a baby and say how cute it is. But there are some words which end with cute which are not so good. One is called prosecute. Another is called persecute. But uh, a more dangerous thing is called electrocute. So uh, this morning as we were talking uh, in, the, in the inaugural, we had an uh, introduction which was said, if you are not conscious of safety, you will become unconscious. But if you are not careful with electricity, you will not only be unconscious, you will become conscious in the other world. So it's important to know and handle this uh, particularly useful device called electricity. I'm going to show you two videos. Please watch it carefully and after that maybe I will ask you some questions. Uh, which We'll see whether you have observed what is in those videos. The shock lagega. Havel's fast trip RCCB MCB for totally shockproof life. One more is coming in. Shock. I am not advertising for Havels today, uh, but there is an inherent uh, problem in these videos. Uh, as I go through my presentation, you will be able to understand. Uh, the way it is portrayed is not exactly right, though the use of ELCB as well as RCCB both are very good and I will recommend it also. I will take you through a very quick uh, presentation. Um, the first thing I would like to talk about is how electricity is sensed. What amount of electricity can be harmful for you? The units I am talking about right now is milliamps, a mild uh, flow of electric current through the body which is measured in milliamps. If it is 0 to 0.6 Nobody will feel anything. In fact, our body, our brain, our heart all run on electricity, mild forms of electricity. Okay? So, but when it goes to 0.6 to 6 milliamps, you will feel a tinge, a small feeling. But the beauty of that is you can retract, you can pull out your hand out of it. When I was a kid, my mom said, if you touch electricity, you will die. 
but I was very curious, being an experimenting mind. So in my uncle's house, we had an, uh, a night lamp without a bulb in it. So I switched it on and put my finger inside. First once or twice, nothing felt. But suddenly I had a jolt. But I took my hand out and that was my first experience of an electric shock. Fortunately, at that time, the amount of current flowed through my body was less. So I could retract myself. But if the amount of current that flows is slightly more than that, say about 6 to 15, so there will be pain, there will be muscular effects. But if it goes more than 15 to 25 milliamps, the let go threshold crosses and it's the muscles contract and you will not be able to retract your hand. As you go on further, it may lead to heartbeat, uh, increased heartbeat, blood pressure. The next level will go to ventricular fibrillation. I'm not a medical guy, so I tried to learn it from a doctor and all that I found was it's like heart is used to a particular level of electricity and the moment you get a larger amount of current, it goes into a vibration mode which cannot function or pump in blood as it should, which can lead to very disastrous, disastrous consequences. But as it goes on, it can be still further, further, further dangerous. But if it goes to a higher level, say about 8, 0.8 amps to 2 amps, even 0.1 second exposure can be very harmful. Now in the advertisement, my question is, the guy was holding a dryer and he was dancing for a long time. How many seconds did he dance? I calculated that he was dancing for 20 seconds. If he's actually having a natural reflex, the moment he had that shock, he would have thrown it out. But if he had had this higher amperes for 20 seconds, he will be dancing up there, not here. <laughs> so the advertisement though well-meaning communicates a message. It doesn't show that you can stick on, stick your bums to another fellow and keep dancing and then be alive. As they showed the two doctors uh, hitting each other and still dancing away. It's not possible. So higher levels, even a two amp current can lead to uh, burns of muscles, limbs and uh, uh, higher than that can lead to very severe burns. Now look at this chart. Uh, 10 amp, 10 milliamp is the threshold of perception. Then it goes to a higher level. It goes on to a respiratory paralysis. And above that is ventricular fibrillation, sustained myocardial contraction, and burns injury. So this is a, for a 60 hertz, an exposure of just three seconds, one, two, three seconds. Let's move on. How does an electric shock take place? The electric shock takes place when the victim is part of an electric circuit. That means when current is able to enter through one part of the body and exit through another part of the body. So that means there must be a simultaneous two-point contact. A good example is you see birds sitting on a high tension line, 11 kV line, but they are absolutely alive. Whereas a monkey climbing that electrical pole and it touches the wire, it gets burnt up because it has touched the high tension wire and it is touching the pole with the other part of the body and a huge current flows through the body and that causes an electric shock. A simple diagram here represents somebody is touching an out, uh, a supply line and they are standing with their feet to the ground and current flows through the body and goes to the ground. Now my question is, why sometimes we feel so, such a heavy kind of a shock and sometimes less? The body is actually a good resistor of electricity. But unfortunately, if you have just gone out for a walk and or a jog and you're sweating, the flow of electricity can be very, very harmful. It can be really harmful. Okay, let's move on fast. I'm going to touch upon a few electric hazards and to just, uh, I've taken these uh, from OSHA uh, standards which are available on the net. 
the effects are burns, electrocution, shock, arc flash, fire, and explosions. So it's an acronym. So we request you to be safe. Burns are the most common shock-related injury resulting in electric or arc flash, which, which has to be avoided. Electrocution, it's, it can kill when a person is exposed to lethal amounts of electricity. Shock is the quick rec, uh, reflex response to, of electric current through the human body. And a flash, arc flash is another uh, cause. And uh, these flashes can occur in many places. Uh, most common thing is when you have a three-phase line going, uh, on a, an overhead pole and sometimes one face touches the other one, there is a huge flash taking place. Or sometimes, uh, wrongly, a live wire is connected to another wire which is connected to the earth and the huge amount of current flows there and there's a flashing. And one important thing that is to note is you need not touch a high tension wire to get a shock or even this getting art. You can get close and if you get close, you can be charged by what is called as charging by induction. So you go close to high tension line, be careful. Before touching, you can be burnt. Finally, uh, fire. Fire is a very common thing. In India, nobody bothers about checking the electric wiring capacities. They just connect uh, extension box and keep loading them. And the overload leads to fire. Uh, it loads uh, in the plugs, switches, instead of a, a 15 amp plug, they connect uh, uh, high capacity equipment into 5 amp plugs and there is fire. Explosion is also a secondary possibility. Uh, I have heard of a house where uh, there was a gas leak and uh, suddenly uh, the lady came and she opened the door of the kitchen and she switched on the light. And if you know, almost all the time when you switch on the light, there could be a spark. And that spark ignited the whole room and there was a big blast. So something to note. Okay, let's look at five. I'm going to touch upon five general precautions. First is overhead lines. Good. My earlier speaker has already touched upon it. So I'll just move on. Ask them to de-energize an earth power lines. Earthing is a very simple process. I'll, I'll show you a diagram uh, to explain that because that word has been used again and again. And unfortunately, when a non-technical person thinks of the earth, they'll think about the globe with uh, all the maps around. So in, ask the electricity board to insulate the sleeves properly and ask them to do checkup. This is already touched upon. Administrators should... Uh, train staff about power line hazards and availability of protective measures. Instruct staff of how to deal with emergencies. Second one, isolate electrical parts. Wherever there's electricity flowing, have the correct form of protection. The conductors which are entering into boxes, cabinets, they should be in places where there is no abrasion or hitting. And all these boxes, uh, junction boxes, outlet boxes, fittings, Everything should be isolated. That means it should not be touching common poles or stands or any other equipment should not hit these boxes. Thirdly, install proper bushings or provide smooth, well-rounded surfaces for flexible cables. When cables enter into a plug or enter into a place, it, there should be a properly well-rounded surface so that it enters. Otherwise, at that entry point, it again and again gets uh, friction and very soon there will be a short circuit. Third one, install circuit breakers. This is a, a, a very, very important thing. We saw the uh, advertisement also. Circuit breakers are to be installed in every three, at least in 15 amp points. Very important. Circuit breakers are very simple. Uh, the moment you touch it, you will not get the shock, but the that circuit breakers will switch off. When your electrical guy is asking you to test the ELCB, ask him to stand barefoot and touch a 230 volt AC line. He should not get a shock. The ELCB should trip. Okay. A separate ELCB in the OTs, if you are going to have ELCBs, please have separate ones because there might be some life-saving equipment on another line. And because of a fault in one line, the ELCB will switch off and the whole OT will go off and you will land into trouble losing the patient. The third one, 
MCBs should replace traditional kit cans. The main reason many places there is fire is because these fuse, fuse kit cats that are there are connected by very thick wires. The electrician sees if he put, puts a small wire, it burns up. So he puts a very thick wire. I've seen strips. I've been visiting mission hospitals across the country, uh, maybe at least some 50 of them, and practically everywhere I find electrical dangers. The fuse kit cat is missing. There is a strip put across the fuse. So that can lead to a major disaster. The moment the fuse blows up, that there means something wrong down the line. So please don't uh, put a higher size fuse, but find out the problem. Have a clear earthing plan. Earthing plan is to connect all the equipment, the body and other things, to the ground as uh, our uh, chairperson has explained. That's a separate wire connecting to the one. That is the third plug point in the plug, the top one in a 5 amp or a 15 amp 3 pin plug. That has to be a continuity. So there should be a procedure and that should, it should cover equipment used by employees that is connected by a cord and plug. And they should be recorded. Every testing of earthing pits, earthing continuity, everything should be recorded so that there is a clear uh, line so that electricity can flow out. So flexible cords is another important area where we, we fail in many places, particularly in hospitals. So they, all the cords should be three wire type and they should be rated for hard usage as well as the rating should be shown on the cord and kindly ensure that the wires are thick enough to handle the particular load. For example, if you are connecting a microwave, it should be at least 1500 watts. If you are connecting a, a fridge, it should be connecting at least 2000 watts. If you are connecting an air conditioner, 2500 watts. So you need to be careful about that. Okay, well, let's look at, this is a, just a revision of the things. Precaution, look, uh, there is a patient lying there on a bed and he is getting some connectivity, but unfortunately the ground wire is broken. So what happens is, if there is a leak on the body of the equipment here, as it's shown here, and if the patient is connected to a ECG or something, the current instead of flowing to the ground back here will flow through the patient and can harm the patient. So most importantly, when you handle any equipment, if you feel a small tingle somewhere, just stop using it and report it and fix it before. And any equipment that is wheeled to a patient, just ask your technician to check whether the earth wire is okay. It's very simple to check and a multimeter is just enough to check. And another important point is water is a very dangerous uh, uh, thing because it conducts electricity. So saline solutions that are being given to the patients and if the bed is drenched with uh, body fluids, it can be very harmful. Some of, sometimes these saline stands are also shaky and it can break. The moment the patient is drenched or wet, the conductivity increases to a larger extent and danger of electrical fires is very high. Okay, let's remember that electricity is like a knife. You can cut things with it, but if it is, if it is used properly and safely but it can hurt by accident and misuse. Electric, electricity is very useful, is one of the most significant inventions. And we are doing it, we are using it on a day-to-day -day basis everywhere. Your mobile phones have to be charged, your uh, food has to be hot, your food has to be cold, and practically it has found applications on a very wide range of applications. But if you are not able to handle it carefully, we will be the losers. So it's a very useful tool. I'm sure uh, when you go back to your own installation, just check whether they have maintained these precautions, whether they, uh, they have these ELCBs which are working, whether the uh, line that is connecting your building to the earth pit, the earth pit uh, requires a small equipment called MEGA to test how much, whether the, your earth pit has been effective. So all your equipment bodies, even in your home, if your computer is giving you a shock on the body, if you touch the body of that, that means it's a wrong thing. Unfortunately, in India, the electricians are very untrained people. They learn by, uh, by trial and error. 
even connecting a simple bulb the bulb has to be first connected to the, through the live line and then it has to be connected to the switch uh, live line should be going to first the live connection should go to the switch and the switch could, should go to the bulb and the bulb should go to the neutral and many electricians connected to your neutral line even you go home and switch off your tube light and wait for some time and see if it is blinking and if it's blinking for a long time most probably the switch is in the wrong connection so thank you very much my presentation is over i have uh, given my email id if you have any specific uh, help you need or observations or even objections are welcome thank you very much thank you thank you sir here